Happy New Comic Book Day, Webheads! Guys, not only is it New Comic Book Day, but it is my birthday. But before we get started, guys, I got my Breakfast of Champions. I got my Starbucks Dragon Fruit Refresher right here. And I got my Mickey D's. So once I eat, I'm going to head to that comic shop. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, I'm your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you another episode of Spider Slayer's Comic Book Hall. Fans, this is episode 513, and of course this is the video series where I show you what I pick up at my local comic shop, which is Comic Central, located in the city of Sanford. Guys, you're not going to want to miss their shop, so if you're ever in the city of Sanford, in Central Florida, guys, tell them that Mike Spider Slayer sent you. They got some great stuff to check out, guys. And now, let's get started with this week's haul. And here we go, the mysterious black bag. And yes, it's my birthday. I'm 47 years old today. So we're just going to call this the birthday haul, right? All right, so here we go. Now, carefully take out these books, right? Another super stack worth of books here. Boom, right there. Look at all that stuff. All right, so let's get this all separated out, getting ready to show you guys what I picked up. Now, on Saturday, you guys are going to want to check out some of the additional stuff that I picked up. It's a fun series where it's called can you smell what the Spider Slayer is buying? And I show you all kinds of great old comic books I picked up. And I got some really old ones. And hopefully you guys will tune into that. So, all right, here we go. First book that I picked up this week is, of course, The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 88. As we get the first appearance of All Hail the Queen Goblin. That's right, guys. Looking forward to seeing what happens in this book. What's the point of this female why is she the queen queen goblin why does this person exist here's some of the interior artwork maybe not my favorite artwork off the start but you know what it's okay and already i heard that this story was actually halfway decent so we'll see what happens with this issue or this week's issue of the amazing spider-man so speaking of the amazing spider-man we wind up getting the gwendolyn uh, variant, you know, the Gwen Stacy variant, I guess you want to call it, where she is like Jean Grey. So I thought that one was pretty cool, right? Okay. And then next, I wound up getting uh, from Aftershock, which is the newest issue of Chicken Devil, which is always a great series, man. It's so intense. And the last issue, you were left with a crazy cliffhanger. So I want to know the outcome of all of that, but the artwork is always so like static or in your face. There's always so much action that really goes along in it. And it's a lot of fun, man. I really can't wait to see how this story continues. If you have not read Chicken Devil, I say go ahead and definitely pick it up. It's a fun, fun read. All right, next I wound up getting the new event, the Fantastic Four event, which is called The Reckoning War. This is the alpha issue, and it has the Fantastic Four with Jennifer Walter She-Hulk in there. There's the Watcher, Nick Fury Watcher. You got them all in there. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this event has to offer. Great two pages here that I'm showing you right now. So I don't know, man. This could be... This could be a really fun event. There's a lot of action going on in here. So looking forward to it. All right. Next, we got the uh, other Marvel book here that has Elektra in it. This is Daredevil Woman Without Fear. This is issue two. I picked up the Mark Bagley variant. I, I thought this was a beautiful looking cover. I uh, just love how the blood splatters on the white cover kind of makes it pop a little bit more than just looking at the cover, uh, than just the character. And then I love her facial expression there and you can see it there, that, that is amazing. So, and here's some of the interior artwork. We, we always see these two hooking up with each other, right? And we got Chiquetto's artwork in there, um, which is a nice. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what the second part has to offer as it really gave you a little bit more in depth of the character. All right, next we got some independents coming out here and this is a giant. This is the 80 page giant of Geiger. 
And this is a book that's promising you to deliver a little bit more on what's going on in the Geiger universe, kind of introducing all these other characters in here. So if you're into the Geiger universe, if you're into Jeff Johns, this is something that you're going to probably want to check out. Here's some interior art. And let's see if I put, and here's Red Coat. So I know this one was solicited, this character on here. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this, man. I think the Geiger universe is pretty neat. So cool to see Jeff Johns do his own stuff, right? All right. And then next on the list, we have Noctera. This is issue seven. So we get the return of the series, which I'm so excited about. Really one of my favorite independent series of 2021. And we'll get to see how this story continues. <laughs> Look how it starts. Just black right there, right? Here's some of the interior artwork is they're coming to a city that has like all light. So the, the shade creatures don't infect them. So that's pretty neat. I love this series. Love the artwork by Tony S. Daniel. Looking forward to it. So with that, I wound up getting the variant cover to Noctera. This was on my top 10 comic book covers of the week this past week. A gorgeous looking cover. Um, no, I don't think it was actually this one. This is a Jason Fabic one. There was another one on there that was really good, but this is a pretty one as well. So yes, really nice looking cover. All right. Here was a book that was definitely on my top 10 comic book covers of the week. And that one was Sabretooth issue one. Look at the facial expression on Sabretooth. He's like, I'm going to kick some ass. Where are you, Wolverine? <laughs> he probably doesn't sound like that. Uh, but the voice that's in my head is from the X-Men <laughs> cartoon series from the 90s. Here's some of the interior art in here. I want to know how he gets out of Krakoa, man. That's what I want to know. Here's some more interior artwork. So yeah, looking forward to this. I'm hoping it's good, man. I really am. So yeah. All right. Now we go back to some more Marvel. And we got Savage Spider-Man. This is issue one. Uh, paying homage to obviously Amazing Fantasy. Love that cover, man. As he's just half human, half spider at this point. I don't know. But uh, this creature reminds me of the creature from the um, Spider-Man and his uh, amazing of friends where there was this guy that ch changed into like a tarantula guy. And uh, that's what this cover kind of reminds me of. So, oh, wow, man. Look at this. That's intense right there. That is pretty freaking sweet. I love that. Really cool artwork. Who is the artist on this? It doesn't say on this. But look at that. That is crazy intense artwork. I'm so looking forward to reading this now. All right, guys. So now I just want to give a quick shout out to the Facebook group page members. Our first shout out goes to Charles, who just recently got in this Clayton Crane variant signed by Donnie Cates. What a great looking cover with Thanos back there clinching his fist with the Infinity Stones. You got Cosmic Ghost Rider. Congratulations, Charles. The next shout out winds up going to Nick, who is like finally white metal. He's super stoked about getting this 9.9 .9, uh, TMNT Last Ronin issue one. Looks like it's signed. You don't find that too often. So congratulations on scoring that one. Then today I'm going to have a double shout out from Ken, who's been on the uh, group since the very beginning and he bought another collection and that's pretty cool though that they're in all these tubs and you can see all the short boxes and what did he get well here are some of the things that he did receive in the collection it was over 3,000 comics and he spent three thousand dollars but he felt that that it was very worth it got some great looking books there so congratulations ken congratulations to everybody in the group that got shouted out and if you guys want to be part of comic book corner 2.0 webheads unite all you gotta go is go on to facebook search for comic book corner 2.0 webheads unite and guys, you can be part of this amazing comic book community where we talk about the weekly comic books. We talk about our CGC slabs. We talk about our comic book hauls each week. Anything that has to do with comic books, it's on here. Great community. 
Join it today absolutely for free. And you never know, guys, when you could be shouted out on future comic book day hauls. So continuing on with the birthday haul, we have Savage Spider-Man issue one, the homage to Todd McFarlane. You can't go wrong, man. You got to pick up that cover, right? Nice looking cover here as he's just half man, half beast, and he's on the webs, and the spiders are falling from the uh, from wherever, and they're on his freaking costume. So cool, dude. So cool. All right, and then next, we have a little bit of DC coming in play here. We got Batman Detective Comics, issue 1051, the weekly event called uh, Shadow of the Bat, where it's dealing with Arkham Asylum. And I've been enjoying the series. I think it's fun. Um, I think a couple issues ago was the best issue. This Arkham Tower is, you know, crumbling apart. And we get to kind of see what's going on behind the scenes. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good book, man. I like the artwork in it. You get to see what's going on with the hunters in here. And, uh, yeah, love the facial expressions. Colors pop. Can't wait to read some more of Detective. All right. Then speaking of good old Batman, we have Batman issue 120. As this continues the whole Abyss storyline. And what Abyss did to Batman in the last issue is kind of scary. Batman doesn't know kind of how to see, right? And Lex Luthor is in this book. Holy crap, I'm looking at the pages. This is something I kind of don't want to spoil. So we'll look at something that's not such a spoiler. Hey, we'll look at some boring girl that's just, uh, you know, in, I guess, a room with Bruce Wayne who can't really see and she's stitching him up. So here we get to see that. So yeah, really cool, man. I can't wait to read more about Abyss, where he came from, and what's his motives and stuff. All right. Next, on the list, we wind up getting Dark Knights of Steel. This is issue 4 of 12. When does this series not disappoint, right? So well done. I love the writing in this. And I love that <laughs> we always get some different type of twist and turn. So here's a two-page spread of what's going on in this book. Tom Taylor always does a nice job with these alternate universes. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a story of like maybe how... Bruce came to be, right? So yeah, Dark Knights of Steel. And then we got the variant cover with singing Harley Quinn on it. I thought that was comical. I had to get that one, right? And then we got uh, another copy of Mary Jane and Black Cat. Uh, the only reason why I picked up this one was because I enjoyed the last issue so much that like I damaged the corner of it. So I like called my shop. And I was like, can you put another one to the side to me, for me? And uh, so I wound up getting this one. And if you haven't read this, this is so good, man. Really well done. All right. And then we wound up getting Spawn, the cheapest book in the pile here, $2.99. Really great series. Spawn's going to be doing battle against this villain. And uh, I guess he's, I don't know. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but... We'll see. I guess he's after Spawn because he needs Spawn to open up those doors so the demons can leave because they're all trapped on Earth. Great artwork here, man. Good story. Love it. And, oh, shit, I just realized this. I don't know if you guys realized who this guy is, but long time ago, I think it was Capullo and Kirkman came up with a character by the name of Haunt, or was it McFarlane that came up with the character? I don't even know now. But um, he hasn't been seen in a long time. And uh, I remember he was making his appearance back in here. So that's pretty cool shit right there. All right, next we have crossover issue 11. So we're getting ready to wind this down. There's only two more issues left of crossover. So I'm looking to see how this, you know, finishes up. It hasn't been my strongest or most favorite work from... Donnie Cates, but it is very meta, and it looks like he's obviously appearing in this book now. So I'm curious to see how his character is in this comic book. And what happened to the main characters? You don't see too much of them. Here we get to finally see him again, but they haven't been really seen too much in the series. So I don't know. We'll see how this ends. All right. And then we have the 10 Lives of Wolverine, where the 10 Deaths of Wolverine issue one was really flipping good. I really liked it as it continued off of Inferno. So I seem to like that one more than I've enjoyed this one. But, you know, it's it's entertaining. This one has to do a lot with Jean Grey, probably. Yeah, and, and some other person in there. 
There's a lot of sex going on in these Marvel books this week, man. Look at all this crazy stuff. What's going on? Inappropriate. Come on, I thought these were for kids. <laughs> 10 Lies of Wolverine, issue 10. Continuing on, we got Devil's Reign, Spider-Woman versus Spider-Woman? How can that be? No, that's not the case. If you read the last issue, you know what's going on in this book. This is a very underrated book, in my opinion. The art is so good in here. Um, the dialogue is phenomenal. Love the way Jessica Drew is written. And uh, this is a book that I can't recommend more enough. There's always so much intense action. Like I said, if you like action, you're going to love this series. It's always in every single issue. So, yeah, looking forward to issue 19. Oh, look, we got more Savage Spider-Man. I guess this is the regular cover. So I wound up getting three covers, the regular and two variants. So, yeah. All right. And then I got the regular cover of Sabretooth. All right. So we got to see all the variants first. And then the regular cover of Daredevil Woman Without Fear. Oh, shit. I guess I bought two covers of um, the Mark Bagley, and I didn't even realize. <laughs> That's so bad of me. But I got two. Maybe I can give one away. And then we have the continuation of Ant. This is issue two. Uh, this is a long time since the first issue came out. What I want is I want a regular monthly schedule when it comes to this book. So I did like the first issue. You got to see a little bit of an origin story of the character. Right? So I don't know. We'll see how this continues. I think that Eric Larson can do a nice job with all this. So we'll see. His art is not the best right now. All right. And then I wound up getting the Amazing Spider-Man issue 88. You know, if this is a character that takes off, I decided to get the 1 in 10 uh, design variant. And it's funny because the initial design variant told you who the Queen Goblin actually was. It said AKA blah, blah, blah. But on the real cover, it doesn't say that on there. That's wild stuff right there. But I love this design variant as it gives you all of the pieces of her technology, all the technology on her suit. And uh, that's pretty cool, man. I like that. Really nice stuff. And then I want to say the pickup of the day for me um, was this back issue I picked up. And this was Moon Knight, Volume 1, Issue 13. Okay, we get to see that. There's a little bit of a glare. Guess who's on there? Daredevil, right? This is the first time that Moon Knight and Daredevil battle each other or meet each other. So if there is a book to spec on, I feel, in the original Moon Knight series besides issue one, it could be this one. Because we got Daredevil, who is in the MCU now, Moon Knight is making his appearance in the uh, in Disney Plus, so you never know; these guys could actually meet. Now, this is not a uh, a mint condition book. There is quite a few spine ticks in there. They don't necessarily break so much, but I would say that this is a higher grade copy, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. So I'm I'm happy to have it in my very small Moon Knight collection. So. There you guys have it. There is the haul for this week. Like I said, stay tuned for the uh, Saturday series where I show off some of these older books that I picked up. And you're going to like these books, trust me. And of course, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you love my content and you haven't checked out my top 10 most anticipated comic video, hit it right there. And guys, keep buying, keep collecting, and most importantly, keep reading those comics. Guys, happy new comic book day.